Welcome to this new video series that we're doing where each episode demos some tips and tricks with one of Dino's many subcommands. Dino makes programming simpler and easier, and part of that is not having to pull together your own tool chain every time you start a project. Today's episode is about Dino's built-in test runner, Dino Test. Just like Dino, Dino Test supports TypeScript right out of the box. Let's take a look at the simple library I created. It has add and multiply functions. And here are the two tests that cover both functions. Let's go ahead and run that, and we see that they both pass. You can also click the icon next to the test to run it right in VS Code, thanks to our awesome VS Code integration. Now let's say you want to add types to our library. We can add a type to our parameters and then change the extension from JS to TS. Now let's try running the test again, and they both pass. So with Dino, we don't need any extra config files like tsconfig to set up TypeScript. TypeScript will work right out of the box. Now, what if you want to make changes to your tests without having to rerun Dino Test each time? Well, you can use Dino Test Watch. Now, whenever we make a change to our tests and save it, it'll automatically update. Did you know that there's an easy way to see your test coverage? Let's go ahead and add a third function, power of. Now, let's run Dino Test dash dash coverage and pass it a directory. And now to see the coverage, let's run Dino Coverage. And here you can see that we are at 70% coverage. And it'll even tell you which line and what function is not being covered by the tests. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and add a third test that will cover power of. And now you can see VS Code is letting us know that they don't recognize power of. And let's do a quick fix here, and VS Code will automatically update the import statement to include power of. Now let's rerun the test again. First, let's remove the coverage directory that was created, and then run dino test dash dash coverage pass it the directory. And finally, let's run Dino coverage cov. And now you can see our coverage is up to 100%. Did you know that Dino test could also type check your documentation? This is important if you plan to distribute your library on NPM or other registries. Let's add a comment before power of. First, we'll include the import line, and then we'll include some examples. And let's throw in this example, power of two and the string Dino. And let's run Dino test dash dash doc. And you'll see that there's a type error because one of the argument is of type string when it's looking for type number. Dino test doc is a great way to type check your documentation, which is great to do before you publish your code on NPM or other registries. There are other formats that Dino test can output test results. Maybe you want something minimalist, or maybe you want to output something to your CI tool. Here's the default output, which is called pretty. If you want something more minimal, let's try reporter equals dot. This is the dot output, and when a test fails, it looks like this. There's also the tap output. And finally, JUnit, which can be consumed by many CI tools. And if you don't want to see JUnit output each time you're iterating on tests, you can use this command, which outputs in dot format, but also writes the JUnit to an XML file. And if a test fails, that also is written to the JUnit file as you can see here. These different ways of outputting test results make it easier for you to use Dino Test in whichever workflow you want. Now here are two tricks that'll help you iterate on testing. When you're iterating on a single test and you don't want to run the full test suite, you can use this only function. This function tells the Dino Test Runner to only run this test. You'll notice that regardless of the outcome of this test, Dino Test will still fail to remind you that this setting is enabled because you wouldn't want to check this code in. Notice that when we update these other tests, they aren't being executed by the runner. Now, what if you want to run every single test except one? You can use the ignore function. For the test that's ignored, no matter how you update the test, it won't be run by the test runner. These are two simple tricks to help you iterate on testing faster. <laughs>